Um, and subhanAllah, I was thinking about it. Yani one of the verses that we recited tonight where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the people who hurt the Prophet وسلم, with their loud noise. They were yelling at him, وسلم, which is obviously inappropriate, but this is how, <laughs> yani back in those days, their, their etiquette was such that they didn't care about knocking, you know, asking for permission, anything. They were yelling, literally yelling at the Prophet, وسلم, not even using his title, but using his first name. Ya Muhammad, ukhruj ilayna, ya Muhammad, this and this, from outside of his homes. These were Arab Bedouins who came to accept Islam, but they were actually, and as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the last part of the surah, they were, they, they were, it's as if they were doing Islam a favor by accepting Islam. And there are people who still exist like this, where they feel like, it's like they're doing Muslims a favor by the good deeds that they do. Wallahu musta'an. And a person comes to the masjid, it's like he's doing the people of the masjid a favor by coming. The only person that you're doing a favor is yourself. This is why the focus should always be internally. And so... These people, what did they do? Inna ladina yunaduna ka. This is the verse. Min wara al hujurati akthruhum la yaqilun. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is negating to them the idea of thought and mindfulness. The people who yell at you from behind the rooms, which is the rooms of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his homes, most of them have no minds. They're not mindful. And then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Walau anhum sabaru hatta takhruj ilayhim la kana khayr lahum." And if they were only patient until you came out to them, it would have been better for them. Then what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say at the end of the verse? Wallahu ghafoorur rahim. And Allah is forgiving and Allah is merciful. It's as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is blaming them for something, but then telling them that the door of forgiveness and mercy is still there. You're not completely destroyed. Because if you left it without this, we would have assumed, man, these people are not even Muslim, these people are fusaq, these people are wretched, etc., etc. But the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends it with ghafoorur rahim, Allah is forgiving and merciful, it's as if he's saying, We've already forgiven you, don't worry. And by doing so, he demonstrates that vast forgiveness that he has. Even though he's blaming them for that behavior, he's saying it's, it's, as, it's okay, if you turn to me for forgiveness, you're already forgiven, it's not a problem. And thus, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala demonstrates his vast forgiveness and mercy, especially for people when they did things out of habit. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, and we know, that these people's habits and culture was such that they don't do things the right way. And as, of course, for us, we get to learn that there's proper ways of taking, yani, getting permission, الاستئناس, you know what I mean, knocking on somebody's door, getting their attention, etc. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala demonstrates His forgiveness and His mercy. This is why we should always, no matter the sin that we have, we should turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness and mercy because we know that He's forgiving and He's merciful. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He indeed forgives us and our family members and our forefathers and our teachers. And then he allows us to reunite with them, inshallah ta'ala, in jannatihi, ya rabbil alameen. Hada wallahu a'lam. Wa sallallahu sallam wa barakatuhu ala muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ajma'in. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.